Sure. Well, I guess what I can talk to is, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, let's go over the basics. Um, yeah, so how is this kind of fundamentally different is a good thing. So I can talk here. What I'll here. What I'll show is I'll show the um, I'll show the core OS Slack. So if you're you know a Red Hat employee or if you're a part of the Red the core OS community, um, you can join this uh, this user group here. Let me go ahead and share it. And uh, if you have any. Um, you know, any questions about Cypress, you know, we've, we kind of answer them in here. So um, this came from the fact that multiple teams were getting started and uh, a lot of folks um, had the same questions and some of the same questions I had when I got started. And from my experiences, uh, you know, using this technology is I went in, I, I chose the framework before I had two years of history with it, like everything. But I had had two years of history with Selenium, so it was very easy to make that difference there. Um, so let's. Uh, so basically, if you'd like to join, uh, you know, reach out to me. I'll put my uh, email in here, and you can um, ask any questions in there as well. Um, but um, let's see. I have an example repo here that kind of shows what I would uh, perceive to be the best practices. So I can go over kind of how this is a little bit different. Um, let's do um, AAP, and I'll, I'm gonna post this in the chat. So this is on my fork. I'm attempting to get it onto the Ansible fork. So this URL may change, but if it does, I'll put a link here. Um, so let me go ahead and put this in here. So this is available here. Yeah, so that's uh, this is where I'm trying to like try to get uh, things working for basically for the platform. So um, where this is fundamentally different, let's let's talk about where this is fundamentally different. Um, there's a concept of um, let's go over the best practices. So Cypress best practices. Where this Cypress in itself is very opinionated. Um, and so uh, there, uh, I think probably the biggest difference you'll notice is the over-reliance on URL-based navigation. So um, there is this uh, pattern against the page object model, which is what we all know and love. Um, it's you basically, um, uh, with the page object model, you, what, what ends up happening with the page object model is you basically create a copy of your application in test code that defines how that you know the application looks and feels, um, and how you can interact with you know individual components you know down the line. With Cypress, they use jQuery to make it a little bit easier to you know work with specific tests um, or specific parts of your application. So the tests are very different. Um, so. Um, that's probably the biggest difference in terms of best practices is to get away from the page object model. And what that looks like is uh, in this test here, I'll show you, is um, the test becomes, instead of you know clicking around on this page, um, so let, let's go here. So if you were to cloud.redhat, if you were to go to this page, So these, these tests here are designed to run against cloud.redhat. Um, if you were to go to this page um, with the page object model, you would do what I just did, which is, remember what I just did, it's uh, click the login button, uh, you know, uh, enter in the password field, log in, then click on this nav bar, nav here, and then go to your, you know, the, the destined, um, the destination you want to get to. But in Cypress, they really want you to navigate and kind of go almost into the level of integration testing, where you're you're kind of uh, more closely inside of the the you know the functionality of the app. So let's go ahead and do this. So instead of search, so instead of uh, you know with the the standard test suite writing or the you know how you would write it normally. You go to redhat.com, log in, go down here, make this available, click on this, wait for that previous page to load. Um, 
And then um, let's see, we type in cloud. And then you type in tower. And then you would get to this search query up here. But the way Cypress wants you to do it is you, um, you want to authenticate separately from what you're trying to do. And in the test, you want to, let me make this bigger. This is probably a little bit too small. People uh, tab, view, zoom in, view, zoom in. Yeah, so in this test, what you're actually doing is you're visiting this URL and then you're waiting for, um, you're waiting for a network request to come across before you continue forward. That's the biggest difference is you're, um, you, 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 instead of searching um, and clicking around, you, you do everything you can by direct navigation. And then you um, wait for, you know, in this case, the, the authentication token to come back for this before proceeding on the test. And then the other big thing here is you get the capability of um, all of, you know, jQuery gets a lot of flack for, you know, how it was used in the past, but for tests, it's awesome. You get um, a total access to anything going on, um, any element that you want to see. So let me go ahead and set that up really quick so you can see that. Um, but from a basic level, the, the way that you um, test the application is a little bit different. You um, Does that make sense, uh, Arnab? Arnab? Um, let's see if I can find a better example. Let me check this out. Let me see what the actual, yeah, so the um, Cypress Open is what this one is. Sorry. So uh, the other thing here uh, that differentiates kind of Cypress is it, it has this kind of like this holistic view of, um, of testing. Um, so if you think about what you do as a test automation engineer, or a developer, it's you You write new tests and you kind of maintain those tests as the application changes, and then you fix tests when they fail. Um, um, and there's a fourth one, which is really you, um, you, I, you when the, the tests fail, you're, you're ultimately looking for the bug in the code and getting to that point where you're seeing what that bug is, is um, you know, it takes a lot of time, but writing new tests um, updating those tests and then finding the bugs is is where I think most of us spend our time. That's kind of the, the three main workflows here. So they, they do a really good job with making this um, easy to work with. So let's pull this one back up. Um, by way of a kind of a GUI browser here. Um, so this is Cypress and what um, it's gonna fail because I don't have the uh, my environment variable set. Um, but what you're seeing here is, um, yeah, I need to set my environment variables. Um, and you can see that I don't have my environment set variables here because it'll show you your configuration. It'll show you everything you need to know about what's running. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. So let's let's go through, the, I guess, the test authorship and then I'm gonna stop. Because I do, I do want this to be interactive. I, did, I do expect there to be like questions about things. Uh, so let me go ahead and get this off of my screen so that I can um, go ahead and I'm gonna have to delete those now. <laughs> I'll have to roll those credentials. Um, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more or less, um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the, the GUI browser here. 
Um, and please, somebody hop in with some questions or something. Um, is there anything coming across in the Q&A? So we're going to launch the same thing again, um, this time with, uh, you know, credentials to be able to log in. Um, and I've masked the credentials in the test. So um, let's see here. Let's run that test again. So you're getting kind of the view here I'm sorry. of the test running. Um, so the test is now running, and what you're seeing here is the the real time view of what the um, of what the the test sees, and then you're seeing um, a kind of a snapshot view of that over time. So that again, uh, Nick Nicola, are you seeing any uh, questions in the Q or Q and A? Or yeah. I was about to point out that there's a question in the Q and A. Okay. And yep, there's actually two questions. So I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, I, I heard that um, Gage and Tyco is good for web testing. Gage gives a high level group concepts. You agree? It can clean up your test script. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a really important uh, thing to talk about. Um, uh, so. A lot of uh, so this fall this also follows kind of the uh, the BDD style of describe and it, um, but this does not have the kind of the abstraction of Gherkin, which is like business logic. Um, so the the tests don't really follow that, but uh, um, yeah, it does clean it up and makes it very easy to read. One thing you can do um, with Cypress is you can get something pretty close, and I'll, I'll show you how to make these um, tests a little bit by doing the sci.log command. So what you can do is you can type in sci.log. Let me go ahead and uh, um, show you this test. And yeah, so I got automation hub test up. So um, let's see if this runs. Okay, please run. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll show you show you can how you can get somewhat close to that with the sci.log command. But um, okay, so the test is running here. So what you are seeing is the test running locally on my machine, and it's testing you know redhat.com or cloud.redhat.com, but it's doing it in such a way that um, it's basically taking snapshots of the DOM in time as it records everything going on. So I'll show you how powerful it is when we go, to go back here. But uh, you can see all of these network requests going across on the left-hand side, and you can see um, you know, the effects that has here. So when I'm gonna go ahead and stop this test. But yeah, so you can see at every point in time what the test saw. So the test at this point saw this field. So remember how we talked about, I'm gonna pin here. Remember how I talked about I saw this, um, this, we navigated by URL and then we had to wait? Well, what we were waiting on was the definition of the SSO request that validated that we were able to move on in the test here. So once we got there, then we, we had the information that we knew to say, we are done waiting. The application has the information it needs to move on to the next step, which is this one. And then we can see kind of, so I can, I can take a look at everything on the screen with the selector here. Um, you know, this is what the test could see. So I could write a test that does that if I wanted to. I could, um, you know, manually click on this and kind of see that sort of thing. It's pretty powerful. Um, but also it lets you expose things to your console. 
So um, when you're writing a test, it, you know, a lot of the times in UI testing, it takes a long time to kind of figure out what the what Selenium sees or doesn't see. With Cypress, you can uh, you can get the object at a high level and then figure out what it does or does not have visibility into. So in this case, you can see, and I'm, I'm sorry, it's a, a, not the biggest, let's see if I can make this bigger. Um, uh, command plus, plus, plus. So you can see here in the Chrome Dev Tools, Cypress found this element that I specified, which was the href, yielded it, and then I can get more information about it if I need to. Um, and it talks about the kind of the assertions that come with it. Um, and so when you're writing a test and you're like, this isn't, I can't see this or I'm not interacting this with the, what I think to be true, you can stop the test and see if that's true. So in my case, I actually don't have anything else about this that's interesting because my selector, the thing that I care about in selecting this thing is so um, specific, there's no ambiguity and that's by design. When you are using locators to find things in your application, you want it to be so specific that there is no ambiguity, that it, it, that it doesn't kind of change over time. So that's why we're using this. Um, by grabbing the href and and if you you can you can put wildcard matches in here if you'd like so you can make it so it matches only a part of this um, that sort of thing um, but that's that's kind of the two biggest things between the difference between selenium is kind of the, the workflow is different it's very easy to kind of write a test in this workflow of get to a specific part um, and then and see what the test sees and that's what's always missing from selenium is seeing what selenium sees. Um, that's what's so cool about Cypress. Uh, it's so easy to do this. Um, and then the the other thing I wanted to show uh, related to this, if we go into the Cypress browser, um, we look at the runs, is you have a kind of like a dashboard view. This is the other differentiating feature. Um, there's a dashboard view of all these tests as they run. Um, and you can get like how long they run, top failure, slowest test, common errors. You get the kind of the video recording of tests, um, and you get so you can kind of get a history of where they failed as well. So you can you kind of get this view. So the the overall workflow as a Cypress automation or uh, using Cypress and test automation is uh, it greatly reduces kind of um, troubleshooting um, and all of the things that come with it. So you can see here it failed the first time. It failed the second time, but it succeeded the third time. Therefore, it's considered a flaky test because it failed a few times. Um, so that kind of gives us that view. So let me stop looking at that. Um, but yeah, so going in, let's let's add that side.log thing I was talking about. So in this test that we just wrote, um, one thing you can do to get kind of that um, kind of that view, let's see, which test were we just running? Let me just run this one is you can um, you can give it, um, so you can say sci.log and then the commands and it'll appear uh, with business. So can can navigate to the, um, the uh, let's see, hub collection for tap in cloud and include this as a log in the statement. Um, and let's see, should we, it detected the file change, so it should rerun automatically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is how you get closer to that BDD style where you have business logic, uh, you know, displayed on screen here, but the actual, you know, the abstraction layer between modeling everything with Gherkin um, isn't there. Yeah, so you can see you could, you could write basically notes to somebody at the business level to say, you know, this is what this step is doing. Um, and then you can move certain components into, you know, custom functions so that you can get something pretty similar. Um, so let me stop this test. Um, let's see. How effectively to prepare cleanup data before or after the test environment? Yeah, so um, exactly. So that's a huge, huge thing. So for me, um, for my style, um, uh, let's see if I can pull it up. So we have... Um, I'll answer it with why I do it the way I do. So with um, my the project I had to work on AWX, I wanted us to be able to run with perfect parallelization. So let's see if I can find it. 
And so in order to do that with perfect parallelization, um, you have to make no assump assumptions about the state of the test before it starts. And you have to make no assumptions about the, um, the data that exists before the test starts um, to be like, allow for perfect parallelization. So it controls everything. And um, so you can put a before each in any in anything, um, let's see, you can put it before each uh, as you could do in any other JavaScript framework to basically describe how you, before you do this kind of set up, um, you know, um, actually I can just show you the code um, and pull this off screen. But yeah, so, um, I, so I don't clean up after myself. So part of the test design here is to be as fast as possible. So we're running um, hundreds of tests um, in 13 minutes, effectively, um, which is awesome. Um, so Cypress, when you use their dashboard service, allows you to send, uh, it, it basically does this test load balancing concept where it'll tell you, um, you know, if you split up your test run in parallel this many ways, you can save this much time. So this is saying right now, I'm running it 17 different ways against 17 different machines. If I wanted to save a minute and 30 seconds, I could split it across 26 machines. It costs more, but I get the results faster. Um, but yeah, so the design, the design of before each and data preparation is all what can you do in the in a single test that does not influence the um, anything else going on in any other test. Um, so that whole mantra of leave no trace um, doesn't really add up. Um, so let me see. Um, you don't have to clean up after yourself. So I just do before eaches. And a lot of what we do is, I'll show it here in a second, is um, um, do as much as you can in the before statement. Um, we use our internal, S we, not, our, 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 we use our public SDK to, um, and I'll, I'll just show this here. So this is not, there's no company specific um, thing here, but, um, this is closed source, but not, not to the extent that it needs to be. But yeah, so the, in the before each here, we are creating an application using a helper function that we created. Um, and we add some specificity here of a, a, a basically a UUID. We generate a UUID, and then you can alias this to use in the rest of your tests in the context of this suite, um, or in, in the context of this. So this means that, um, before each of these individual test starts, it has access to this resource that's created only, it created and not deleted. So you can do, if you wanted to, you could do after each to delete it. Um, that was a rambling way of answering that question. Um, does that make sense, Prokop? Um, did I answer it? Is there a chat? Yeah, so Paulina, um, yeah, so um, here's, uh, yeah, so to talk about my experiences with it, um, it, it, the, um, I'm learning about it. I'm two years into it. I did, I did Selenium for, you know, seven years before that. And um, the thing that I'm learning about it is that um, they keep moving things forward. So they, they had, they had most of the functionality that Selenium had except they didn't have multi-browser support. And when they added that, they got most of what, you know, Selenium provided in terms of testing. But in the meantime, they've actually been moving the, you know, the goalpost um, for the past two years. They keep moving it, moving it, moving it. And so, um, you know, as, you know, as I've learned about the tool, as I've learned about, you know, testing in general, I've learned to kind of like go with the flow on this one. Um, and uh, so an example of kind of the stuff that they're adding, like here's, here's a pretty cool thing that they're adding. Um, they're making this easier to get started here. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. If I do, um, Um, let me run this again, but yeah, they added this studio program, Paulina, that helps you get started. Um, I, I don't have it set up here, but, uh, Cypress studio is now built in. 
Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so um, let's see if I can get this working. But effectively, what you can do is um, see if I can get to this. So I'm going to let this run right now. But effectively, what you can do is use this GUI editor that we just looked at to get started writing a test. And it'll write the test for you. Um, so I'm going to let this finish. And if it finishes without errors, I believe that means I can. Write a test. All right. So that finished. Um, does anybody else have any questions while we wait for this to finish? Um, or do anybody have any experiences? Are we losing people? <laughs> Uh, I can, I can, um, so it finished. And unfortunately, it's not letting me, um, it's not letting me do the studio view. But yeah, so what you can do, um, yeah, so Jerry, so yeah, so that, that's, that's it. Um, so it is a paid service. So this is a, um, it is a paid service. Uh, so for open source projects, which is what we qualify for. Um, we don't have to pay for it. So if you do have open source, um, if you work for an open source product, uh, you get all of what I just showed for free. Um, and that's their kind of like goodwill towards this community because it is an open source company. Um, but the the the, the payment um, for this stuff is actually quite cheap. Uh, the I mean, the, the pricing, I'm not here to sell it. I'm not here to sell it, but it's quite cheap. So we are we have an open source version of our test suite, and then we have a closed source version of our test suite. Um, and unfortunately, the the both are behind. You know, both are closed. But the idea is that eventually it'll become um, available for everyone. So let me see pricing. It's uh it's pretty cheap. Um, so you can you don't have to pay anything to get started, um, and you get 500 recordings a month with three users, no problem at all. Um, it's when you start to get, you know, as the team kind of expands, the number amount of work that you're doing, um, that's when it starts to get more expensive. But yeah, it's a hundred dollars a month, which that's the thing about it is like, um, that's a no brainer, no brainer for some of this stuff. Like the ability to automated test load balancing is the only other thing I know of is Knapsack, Knapsack Pro that to do this for you. And that's more than a hundred dollars a month. Um, this this feature alone of automated test load balancing uh, is worth a uh, hundred dollars a month. No no questions asked, um, or I guess no problem at all in my mind. Um, I don't even know how long it would take you to develop something like this in terms of the dashboard. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of like analytics that you you get along with it. I don't use. Um, I sound like a fanboy. <laughs> I'm sure I do. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I have been trying to solve this problem for the last seven years. Um, and with like truly, uh, you know, truly pure, perfect test parallelization. And now that I saw that this was built in um, with the, the service, you know, it was a no brainer. Um, but does anybody else have any uh, kind of experiences or is anybody else running uh, an alternative to Cypress? Um, oh, okay, Jerry. Yeah, can, can I use Cypress to automate parts of a test? Let's say I do something manually and then run Cypress to do something tedious that is hard to do by hand uh, and continue doing it manually. Yeah. You can. Um, so you can do a uh, Psy, I think, I think it's Psy debug. Um, let's see if I can do this.
run this again. Yeah, I'm curious why um, this is configured for. Um, this is configured for running. Oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. Let me I, I didn't pull down the latest. I, I apologize. Uh, let me stop this really quick. Yeah, let me let me let me show you the writing a test manually. Yeah, awesome. Cool. OK, awesome. Yeah, I needed to enable the flag here. Experimental Studio True. Um, it just came out. Like I said, they keep it's so rapid um, that it you know it constantly changes. Let me show you. Um, maybe maybe this will help explain it. Um, let's see. Let me let me show you what this would look like. Um, yeah, if anyone has any other questions, I can answer in Q&A. Um, let's see. Yeah, we moved. We, yeah, Prokop, we just moved from Nightwatch. Yeah, that's the one we used to use. Uh, the biggest question for me is how to smoke test a registration process or entity creation without the DB cleanup. Um, yeah, yeah, well, that... Uh, so the biggest question is how does the registration process without the DB cleanup? Um, so you can, okay, so this, this just finished. Let me show um, the, um, let me show you the manual stuff. Okay. Let's let this finish. This does not like running while presenting. I don't know if you all can hear, but my uh, my laptop sounds like a jet engine right now. <laughs> here it is. Yeah, so here's what you can do. Um, so this hopefully answers uh, some of the questions uh, about, you know, getting started, Paulina. You know, this is one of them. Um, and doing things manually is possible here. Um, so we're going to let this, we're going to, we're going to let this thing finish. And right now, yeah, um, so the while we wait for this to finish, um, the way to do that, Prokop, is with the sci.task command or the sci.exec command. And I'll show you the API here in just a second. Because what we're doing, Prokop, is we are interacting. There you go. So um, studio commands. OK, so it, I hope you all can see this. Um, but I am going to um, interact with this. And so I'm going to, let's say I want to uh, click into here and type in the word um, not, not available. So it does that, clears that. Um, it shows me all of the, you know, the, the, what's going on in the browser, which is going to be super important. And then I can clear all clicking on that. And then let's say, click on this one. And then let's do that. So I'm going to save it. And so what just happened is I actually just wrote, um, into the test. See if it shows me where. Yeah, right here. It shows me, uh, I just wrote into the test based off of clicking around. So it makes it really easy to get started um, with this because you can, it's basically like the Selenium IDE um, in terms of writing tests. You can actually just navigate around and do all the things you would want to do. Um, and this is new. So this is a beta feature that just got released like a week ago. And so what I said about, you know, um, you know, the pace of the how this is moving, it's all going in the right direction. They're all making the right decisions, and it's moving so rapidly in a in a given direction. Um, but yeah. So let me show you the the task API. So the sci task. What you can do with sci task is you can just do arbitrary. Uh, you know, interaction. So you can, um, and I, in my case, let me, let me do exec, exec might be better. We have, um, 
the ability to just run things arbitrarily on the command line. So with exec, you can do um, it run an arbitrary script on the host machine that's running Cypress. So if you wanted to seed the database, if you wanted to modify the database, you could do that by executing raw command line things. And the important thing is that, who cares about that? The, the thing that you do care about is uh, any output that comes back to the command line, like anything that you would see on the CLI, then becomes available as an object in your test. So in our case, when we are, uh, let me show you the example here. Um, let's see, I just had it up. Um, in our, our case here, for um, our test on the, the AWX thing, we, I talked about using a SDK, well, it's actually a Python-based SDK. Um, so when I, let's see if I have a good example. Um, yeah, here, here's that example again. So you're talking about you know working with the database. Um, anything you would do, you could do arbitrarily here. Um, you, yeah, exactly, Paulina, exactly. That's it's the best way to get started, I think. And then you can go back and kind of rebuild it over time. Um, but yeah, so you can see here that you can create. Uh, so this this function. Right here, this met, th this functionality here, I should say, functionality, actually runs things on the command line using our SDK in Python, and then that is aliased as an output. So this becomes an object called app, and then app has things about it that come back from the JSON response. So exactly, yeah. So you could do that, Prokip. So you could do that, and it will tell you in the kind of the context of what you're doing. So you can. You can actually go into the database and delete the object that you created in the beginning of the before each step, um, so which is really powerful. Um, so sci.task and sci.exec. And I think the best, uh, oh, I don't have a good example. I think it's in, if you go to their examples, um, let me just do DB. Seeding your database in node, here you go. Let's see, they have a good example test. Yeah, so you're you're just running a, a an arbitrary uh, command that's called uh, that uh, is defined in your um, uh, package.json cdb, um, and then you. You, you basically have access to anything about it inside of your test. So I think, I hope that answers the question. Are there any other events or questions? Um, I am using Test Cafe. I do not have any experience personally with Test Cafe. I've talked to multiple QA managers um, local to Durham, where I'm at, and um, about Cypress and these alternatives. And uh, the thing that keeps coming back is um, there is no real benefit to using one or the other, Test Cafe or Cypress or Selenium. It's all about kind of like having a champion and having um, uh, having somebody kind of leading the way for one and being passionate about one. So um, I don't have any experiences with Test Cafe, but from a business stand of, uh, point of view, I've I've heard that they're kind of interchangeable that people are happy with both. Um, I'm personally happy with Cypress. Um, I would love to, you know, play with Playwright, for example, would be fun to work with. Um, that's the one I really want to play with. Um, but Test Cafe is also good. I've heard great things. Um, uh, how, how much time do I have left? And Nicola? So you should have until uh, 3.45, so uh, 20 minutes. Cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's talk about the, the other, you know, the, the other workflows. So we talked about, um, let's do this. Let's see. 
what do I want to do? So I showed the studio, which is new. Um, I showed the video recording and parallelization in the dashboard. Um, GitHub Actions are really cool. So it's got a really cool ecosystem. So if you go to the, the link I posted for AAP Visual, I this is part of this is actually to show some like I'm going to call them best practices. I probably not, but um, we have some um, things set up with GitHub Actions. So uh, GitHub Actions are allowing us to let's see if I can find to do some really cool stuff. So in our case here, I've set up GitHub Actions which has, there's all, the thing about Cypress is there's an example for everything. So Prokop asked, hey, how do I interact with the database? Well, I went and found the examples tab at the top, right? I went up to the top of the Cypress webpage um, and I found an example of like what, what he's asking for. And that's what's so crazy is the, what makes this so cool is um, you don't have to hunt around Stack Overflow. They give real working examples for everything. Um, Let's see if I can find it. And one of the ones I found was for GitHub Actions. They have a built-in GitHub Action um, that does some really cool stuff where it'll like post the result of your run, if you configure this, to your PR. So you can see it. You can see everything you need to know about it, like a link to the commits that change, um, view the run. Um, in this case, uh, it'll identify flaky tests for you and even include a link to the thing that failed, um, if it does fail which is, I think, a pretty cool workflow. Um, kind of, It's the kind of the full circle workflow, which is um, I'm running this nightly if I want to. I can run this on change if, if you know, if better. And I, at any given time, I can always go back to the individual commit that broke it or changed it. So the, 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 the relationship here is always kind of full circle. So in our case, we have a lot of dependencies um, that are related to some of the visuals testing stuff that we're doing um, with Cypress. Um, and that breaks a lot. So uh, so we set up Dependabot, which is kind of uh, allowing us to, yeah, right here, we're using Apple tools as a dependency. And this breaks all the time. So we we let, you know, GitHub Actions and Dependabot, you know, run through everything to make sure it, it actually works and it's actually complete before moving on. Um, and uh, this is one example of like kind of the general ecosystem that is available. And it's got a really good plugin ecosystem, Cypress plugin. Um, let's see if I can find it. Excuse me. So uh, these, are, these are more than just examples. These are actual like, um, these are actual plugins. Um, and they, they have different levels. So they have different levels of support. So they have like official, community or official stuff that's like basically built in but not real not really that eventually gets moved in so over time things will kind of graduate to being included in the actual api um but then you also have just general community of people that um are working on things and they'll do a really good job of making sure you're aware of them on their plugins page and um you'll have things like this um that are verified that you know verified that it continues to work and in, i think in this case verified means the cypress team make sure they don't break this one so it's a really good um it's a really good ecosystem to be a part of if you have an idea if you have something that you want to add um you can post it up here and then it'll be promoted over time so official means that it's officially supported is and they'll the, the developers themselves will f fix it um, yeah. And uh, in terms of CI, oh, is there a... No, I don't think so, uh, John. Um, I don't think so. It's, uh, yeah, it's all JS based. This is only JS. I think, uh, so playwrights.net. Yeah, if you're looking for, so the the Microsoft team, uh, I don't know if you went to my, the earlier talk that I gave, but they they bought the, they're, they basically poached the Google Chrome Puppeteer team to basically make a fork of Puppeteer called Playwright. Uh, my 
one's listening to me. But um, yeah, so here's, this is what you would want to use. So this is very similar. I'll post a link. Um, very similar in terms of total functionality um, that, of what Cypress has. It doesn't have the complete ecosystem, but it has all the raw power of like manipulating uh, XHR requests and that sort of thing. And actually, one of the cool things that Playwright has that um, Cypress doesn't is um, the ability to read uh, WebSocket information. So information from the WebSocket, you can't manipulate it. So you can't do that, not yet at least with Cypress. Um, th there is a plugin, an unofficial plugin for WebSockets actually we can go look at. Um, but yeah, um, John, does that answer your question? Um, but it basically comes down to like, um, you know, this is a front end testing tool for front end testing. Um, so it, I mean, most front end developers uh, are using JavaScript. So it's written in JavaScript. Um, it, and it's, they, as someone who's in QA, I'm in QA, they do a really good job of like um, kind of elevating um, the documentation to the point that it's really easy to get going and really easy to be dangerous, which is really cool. Um, one thing I do I did not show that I did want to show in the test, and if anyone has any more questions, please ask. Uh, one thing to show is kind of what's happening next with Cypress. Um, and let's see if I can find it um, here. So hard to see. Uh, let me make this much, 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 much bigger. I apologize. Zoom in. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Huge. Huge. Um, so, um, if you recall, here. On the left, this is the network request that the browser sees, that Cypress sees because it's in the browser. So you're seeing all of this network activity. So anyone that's using a REST API or Graph, a GraphQL, you'll have access to all of those commands and you'll have access to all that traffic. So you can do things like here. Um, you can intercept the requests and what's really cool about that is you can take the original request and modify it on the wire. So in my case, I, I'm making an insertion just to make sure that the, the API request isn't changing, but I want to actually modify the timestamp, uh, just the timestamp, only the timestamp. And I have access to this object and um, the JSON itself, and I can simply uh, intercept by grabbing the request and then modifying one part of the data, um, the data object, and then sending it back out with a modified body. So it's really it, this looks more complicated than it is because just because I want to make sure that it's you know logging things to screen. Um, but I am I am taking a real timestamp, and I am making it ten years in the past so that the app looks like this, which is really right here. I want this to always. I don't want to modify the value of this particular field. I want to verify that the application um, is receiving uh, a, a different payload from the API. So this is a cloud.redhat.com is a running live service. Um, I don't want to have to create um, you know, a mocked service intercept or something like that. In my case, I just want to take 99% of the payload and modify one thing so that in my case, I want this always to look the same, which is 10 years ago. And I could do, I could calculate that. I could modify, I could modify any individual component here to grab it on the wire. Um, yeah, so, so there's two parts to this. Mock, mocking, mocking and interception are two different things. So in this test, let me, let me, let me go, out of, go out of this. Let me close this down. Let me show you what I, what I mean. On this test, we want the, we have a time series chart in our case. We have a time series chart, which if you think about time series charts, it's gonna change a lot, right? Because <laughs> it's gonna calculate the current date. It's gonna calculate that sort of thing. And that's what you wanna test. That's the interesting thing. So in our case, we are sending, um, 
it's going to take a while. We are sending, let's see if it pulls up, a modified JSON object to the chart so that it always looks the same. You look at the date. See, we created this object on the 28th. So the time series chart is always going to render something fixed in time. And the reason we're doing that is we're actually using these tests for visual testing, which compares images and your application over time. So we actually wanted to fix what is rendered in there. So we not only, so it's it's not it's not the same. Um, I don't know how to explain this. Let me, let me think about it. It's a fixture. Let me, yeah, let me, let me, let me show you what this looks like. It's a fixture. So it's it literally a, a uh, let's see, how do I make this pretty looking? Is it control R? Uh, well, anyways, it's a real JSON response that the, that the web app expects to see. Um, and, you know, we can manipulate this to make it look pretty or we can create all these edge cases or whatever, but this is a formatted thing. This is, this is actually formatted. Um, but what I'm, what I'm saying is this is going to the next level, which is it's not actually using, um, like a static JSON object, which I think uh, like what knock does, it's actually modifying the request from the perspective of the API response, um, for, for the browser itself. So Cypress, this is on. Cypress is actually sitting on the other side of the API, just making the change. Um, you can't see my thing. So it's sitting on the other side of the API, making the change. The fixture data is sitting on the, you know, the test code side where we want this thing to be the same and we make assertions based off of that. Um, super cool stuff. And again, it's super, it's really easy to work with. That's the, that's the best part is um, you saw all of this available is data is available. Look at this. Watch this. Let me show you how easy it is to work with. I will stop this test. This is the object. Do you see this? This is what was yielded. This is the request and the response. So everything about it is available to me to modify. Um, so um, anything you'd want to do is available in the test. And look, look what I just did. I, I found it by simply right clicking on that thing in time, that individual request in time, and taking it to the it to the out. You can freeze a test in time as well um, and go back. So this is what this is what the DOM saw. This is what the the Cyper, what the browser and the web app um, and Cypress all saw fixed in time. So where, where that should become more clear is you can see where it clicked and what the effect was. I clicked on it and you can see now it's saying logging in. So after everything that's done, you can kind of see that. But anyways, um, I don't know, that might've been rambling. But yeah, so it's more than just, um, it's more than just stubbing out responses. It's, it's real time manipulation of responses. Um, again, only on API and GraphQL and XHR requests. And ha you can't do it with WebSockets, which is what I need. I need, as a test engineer, and I've asked that the, the Cypress team directly, I need the ability to do that on um, WebSockets. And if I got that, they're working on it. But if I got that, that would be it. Like that's kind of the end game for me as a tester is the ability to modify WebSockets on the wire so that you know I can test all of the, um, I mean, think about all the different ways a WebSocket could fail. Um, you could have it timeout. You could have the network delay. You could have a corrupted message. You could have a missed or skipped message. All of that stuff is impossibly hard to mock up or to, to, to generate um, when doing system level testing. It's very difficult. And uh, you could do it in a unit test, but that doesn't get you kind of the, the holistic view of the impact of that. So um, I need it. <laughs> it doesn't exist yet. But I believe it exists, or and it doesn't exist on Playwright either, and I don't think it exists on Test Cafe. So, um, and there's nothing on the docket for Selenium four or on WebSocket manipulation. But that that's kind of the last thing that I need as a tester. Um, okay, so we have a few more minutes. If anyone has any other questions, uh, is CLI tool with Cypress IO? 
Um, yeah, exactly. So, if, so Prokop, that's what I did. Sci.exec is running a CLI tool. It's literally running a CLI tool and getting that response, the output of that response back into the context of the test um, and that, that you can move on from there. So um, in my testing, I use a CLI tool to do something against the API in the system. Then the result that comes back to the command line is then available inside the context of Cypress, which is really cool. And then, uh, Jerry, I don't know if I answered your question, um, but yeah, you can do a sci dot um, debug statement or a sci dot pause, and you can exit out and then come back in. But um, I will spend the rest. If no one else has any questions, I will spend the rest of my time finding the API and using their Cypress API. Spend some time trying to find it. Um, so what would that be called? Is it pause? Pa would pause be a good name for it? Yeah, let's see if this is it. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly it. There you go. Uh, see, <laughs> I've never seen this before, API before. But yeah, that's exactly what you want. You would do a pause after a certain step. You could do something and then uh, continue back on in the test. So there you go. Yeah, sci so it's, you know, side out pause. Yeah, so this is what happens when you do that. When you do that, you do a side out pause and then you click next, 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 and then you can do something manually and then move on. Yeah, uh, well, you know, Paulina, it's, it's a great tool. I, I, haven't been, I haven't been let down yet, um, except the only way I've been let down is they promised that WebSocket support and then never delivered. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we'll get there. But uh, it, yeah, it's been great. It, it does everything I needed to do other than WebSockets. Um, the, only, the only downside you have to consider is that because this is doing some, uh, I'll just say, uh, I'll just say like illegal things in the browser context, like um, injecting itself into the, the this browser so that you can do all of this stuff, it will fail strict content security protocols. Um, so if you have a live running app um, that has um, a new threshold of um, content security protocols set to a super strict level, um, to prevent people from manipulating your app in a certain way, this won't work. So there, there, there are non-starters for this, for Cypress. So you'll have to talk to your dev team to make sure that um, either, in, 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 which is fine, um, because all the dev team needs to do is give you a developer mode that they use themselves, which every, every NPM project has a developer mode, and then you would just run it against that. Um, so that affects, that affects us. Um, so they're going to enforce a super level, a super high level of strictness. So we have to create two versions of our application on Ansible, one with um, um, in dev mode effectively and the other in production mode. And so the plan for production mode is I, I want to play with Playwright. So we'll, we'll write some sanity tests or um, smoke tests for Playwright um, because that's, that's really popular now. That's really blowing up. And, they added all the different browser support um, or language support. So, 